welcome back to my channel thank you for being here if you saw my most recent video on the lethal injection this video is going to cover the other methods of execution so the gas chamber the electric chair and the firing squad all in one video and we're gonna run right through it so let's get started all right so let's get started with the firing squad because i think this is the one that most people are like what? The United States has a firing squad? So let's talk about it. So it's rarely used and it's actually only used in a few states, Mississippi, Oklahoma, South Carolina, and Utah. And it's only used as a backup to the lethal injection. So if the lethal injection is unavailable, which you know the reasons why it might be unavailable from my last video, if that's the case, then the firing squad can come into play. But keep in mind, it's still a pretty controversial method of execution. So it hasn't been used since 2010, essentially. And there have only been three or four executions that have happened by a firing squad, and they've all taken place in Utah, interestingly. And Utah actually got rid of the firing squad in 2007 and brought it back in 2015 when we started seeing supply chain issues and all the other issues that come with the lethal injection. So let's talk about how the firing squad works. It's typically a team of five or six trained, highly trained individuals. There's a team leader, there's an alternate, and then there's the other team members. The team leader is responsible for filling the rifles with ammo. And a fun fact is that there's one rifle, no one except for the team leaders knows which one it is, that actually fires blanks. And that's because they don't really want any of the shooters to know who fi fired the fatal shot. So this is how it goes. The inmate is placed in a chair in a room, a chamber essentially. He's strapped to the chair, he has a target placed on his chest, and then he has a hood that is placed over him so he can't see anything. He's given two minutes to speak, and I'm only using he because the only inmates that have died by a firing squad are men, and the overwhelming majority of inmates on death row are men. So I just use he for the ease of things. So he gets the hood placed over his head, he has two minutes to speak his final words, he cannot swear or cuss, otherwise he forfeits his time, and then when the time is ready, the team leader will count down, the team fires their first round, if there's still sign of life, they will immediately go into the second round, so on and so forth, until the inmate appears to be dead. If after the first round, the inmate appears to be dead, then they send in a doctor to check the vital signs, and at that point, either the doctor pronounces the inmate dead, or the doctor leaves and another round is fired. I'm gonna put a picture of the firing squad method here, like the actual room that the inmate sits in, and if you look really closely, you can actually see bullet holes in the um, wood panels behind the chair and the sandbags are placed there so the bullets don't ricochet. Now a quick fun fact about the firing squad before we move on to the electric chair is that the firing squad can actually be traced back to a concept from the Mormons called blood atonement and essentially what blood atonement said was that if if an individual died in such a way that their blood spilled on the floor, then they could be forgiven for their sins. And if this was done voluntarily, then that person could potentially regain their position in heaven that they otherwise would have lost. Now it's important to note that when the Book of Mormon underwent a transformation in 1978, this concept of blood atonement was deleted from the books, but nonetheless, the origins of the firing squad can be traced back to this concept. Okay, now let's get into the electric chair, which in my opinion is the most barbaric form of execution, and it's actually on its way out, but we'll talk about that. So it's currently used in about, I think, five states, Florida, Kentucky, South Carolina, Tennessee, and Alabama. Yes, those states. And it's actually used as a backup method in all of these states except South Carolina, which I talked about. They use this as their default method of execution. So in all those other states, it's only used if the lethal injection is unavailable. Okay, so let's talk about the process of the electric chair and how it works. I'm gonna reference my notes for this uh, so that I get you guys all the details, everything you need to know. So the inmate is usually shaved beforehand and strapped to a chair. A metal skull cap shaped electrode is attached to the scalp and forehead over a sponge moistened with saline. So it goes sponge and then metal skull cap. The sponge can't be too wet or the saline short circuits the electrical current and it can't be too dry because then it would have a very high resistance. Another electrode is placed on a shaved portion of the inmate's leg and then the inmate is blindfolded, everyone leaves the room, and the warden instructs the executioner to pull a lever and jolt the inmate. A jolt of between 500 and 2000 volts is given for about 30 seconds. The surge then shuts off, 
and the body relaxes, and then the doctors go in and check the vitals. If the heart is still beating, then another jolt is given, and this continues until the inmate is pronounced dead. Now, kind of a fun fact, I guess, um, if, so when the inmate, after the jolt is given, their body is actually so hot that you would blister if you touch it, so the doctor has to wait a few minutes before he can go in and read the vitals, and according to you know some post-mortem reports the brain actually appears to be cooked when an inmate is electrocuted so let's talk about how the electric chair even came about so it was invented by a doctor by the name of dr alfred southwick and by chance one day he witnessed a man fall into a generator and die immediately from the electric shock now it just so happens that right about this time new york had gone forward with a hanging execution and it was really gruesome. The rope was too long and the head, the inmate was essentially decapitated. So people wanted a less gruesome, more humane way of execution. And Dr. Alfred Southwick had witnessed this man die in a generator and he thought electricity, that's a good way to go. And the electric chair was built. Two years after the electric chair was built was when the first inmate was put to death. This was in 18, 90, so I believe the electric chair was built in 1888 and the first inmate died in 1890. Now this just speaks volumes as to how kind of outdated the electric chair is. You know, we've made such strides in our society, technologically, medicinally, in every possible way since the 1800s, that to me, I find it crazy that the electric chair is still around, but it is only in five states. So I think it's slowly making its way out and we're not gonna see it used for that much longer in relation to you know how long it has been used. So the electric chair they made as a more humane way to execute than hanging, but the electric chair is not that humane and I'm gonna go over a few of the reasons why and it's pretty gruesome. So because of the power of the jolt, the inmate's hands often grip the chair and there may be violent movement of limbs which can result in dislocation and fractures. The tissues and flesh swell to the point that the skin actually breaks. The inmate loses control of bodily functions, so you can assume what that means. There's typically a burning smell that comes with this because the person is quite literally burning, and the eyeballs can even pop out of the inmate's head. Doesn't sound very humane. There's even a point in time when an inmate was literally burned alive so it's not really a humane way to go and we have the eighth amendment which protects against cruel and unusual punishment so i think actually right now it's being the constitutionality of the electric chair is being challenged in south carolina because an inmate was scheduled to be executed last month in may by an electric chair and his attorneys are challenging the constitutionality of it so his execution is put on hold. As I said, South Carolina is the only state that uses the electric chair as the default method of execution. Florida actually gives the option to inmates whether they want lethal injection or electric chair, so it's up to the inmate, but that is the electric chair in a nutshell, and now we are going to move on to the gas chamber. The gas chamber came about in 1924 in Nevada, when Nevada was looking for a, a more humane way to execute. See the trend? It's always like more humane way, and then you come up with another way. And it's funny, the gas chamber has actually modernized in recent years, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So it started in Nevada, and only a few states have a gas chamber. Alabama, Arizona, Florida, California, Mississippi, Oklahoma, and Wyoming. And the first time gas chamber concept was ever attempted was in a jail in Nevada, and the inmate was sleeping, and they attempted to essentially fill the cell with cyanide gas and naturally what ended up happening was that the cyanide gas escaped from the cell and that is why the chamber was built. I'm not sure why they didn't see that coming from the start but that's why the chamber was built so now it's a sealed room, the gas can't go anywhere, it stays in the room it's intended to go in. How the gas chamber works is that a prisoner is strapped to a chair just like all the other methods of execution and there's a bucket of sulfuric acid under his chair. There's a stethoscope placed to the heart so that the doctor outside the room can read the vital signs from not being in the poison. And then from there, a lever is pulled which releases crystals of sodium cyanide. 
When the crystals of sodium cyanide go into the chamber and they fall into the bucket of sulfuric acid, it creates a chemical reaction which results in hydrogen cyanide gas. This hydrogen cyanide gas is what ends up killing the inmate. This is also not a pretty way to go. It's been said that the sensation that's felt during this type of execution is similar to that of a heart attack. And actually one of the wardens was quoted, I'm gonna reference my notes for this. A former California penitentiary warden stated that at first there's evidence of extreme horror, pain, and strangling. The eyes pop, the skin turns purple, and the victim begins to drool. Now, once the inmate is pronounced dead, the gas is sucked out of the chamber via an exhaust fan, and then the, the room and the body is actually sanitized with ammonia to neutralize any remaining traces of cyanide. And then about a half hour later, that's when people enter the chamber with their rubber gloves and they're all masks, masked up, and they clean up the room and take the inmate out and do all the final, you know, final finishing duties. So when being executed in a gas chamber, the cause of death is essentially hypoxia, which is the cutoff of oxygen to the brain. A more modern approach has developed, again, in an attempt to do this more humanely, and it's called nitrogen hypoxia. Only a few states offer it, and it's essentially where they use nitrogen fed through a mask. The inmate is wearing a mask. Nitrogen gas, it's a naturally occurring gas, is fed through the mask and the inmate essentially breathes it in. It's colorless, it's odorless, it's supposed to be more kind of quick and painless, but this actually has not been used yet. Um, it's just available as an option, but as of 2022, no state, although they do offer it, had enacted a nitrogen hypoxia protocol. And with all these methods of execution, it's important to have a protocol in place, otherwise it can't be used because no one knows what they're doing. So, I mean, because no state even has a protocol yet, that just kind of goes to show how close we are to using it, meaning we're not that close. But I have a feeling, you know, if an inmate was scheduled to be executed this way, then the states would kind of be able to develop a protocol relatively quickly. For obvious reasons, they can't ethically test nitrogen hypoxia because you can't test death on a human, you know, it just doesn't work that way. So it has not been tested, it has not been used, but I do foresee this being used relatively soon so we'll see what happens with that but that is essentially the gas chamber the electric chair and the firing squad all summed up into one video i hope you guys learned a lot from this if you have any questions feel free to drop them in the comments you guys know i love talking about this stuff i find it super fascinating and i hope to see you back here for my next video and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already